go. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Explode, your expert business show. Uh, this is the podcast for expert coaches, speakers, and trainers who want to grow their businesses by me and make an impact in the world at the same time. Uh, my name is Simone Vincenzi. I'm your host, and we are uh, giving you episodes a few times a week, sometimes interviewing clients and revealing some of uh, their case studies, sometimes doing behind the scenes of what happens within GTEx, and other times having incredible guests like today. Now, before we get started, remember that if you haven't subscribed yet what are you waiting for subscribe right now uh, if you haven't left a review and maybe you've been following for a while the podcast what are you waiting for leave a review and then the third thing if you haven't downloaded our expert business checklist which give you a roadmap of what to focus right now in your business because if you are overwhelmed then you're not going to think clear. So if you need the roadmap to see and focus on what is essential, depending at your level with you are in your business, make sure you check the show notes where you can find the link of our expert business checklist. So let's get started with the interview without further ado, because I want to introduce our incredible guest today and course creators on the platforms like, on platforms like Udemy, hire Steven to reveal millions hiding in their online course. Because most, and you might see yourself in there, are working 52 weeks a year on their own, creating courses being sold for generally for a fraction of the value and targeting too broad a market. So he helps them convert the low cost, high value courses into comprehensive high value programs, guarantee results generating, listen to this, seven figures. Bottom line, seven figure results don't happen by accident. They happen on purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Stephen Caffrey. Simone, my friend, how are you, sir? I'm excited to be here and uh, to have this, uh, this interview with you. Uh, first of all, where did you get the shirt? Looks great. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a hold off from being in the corporate life. That's that's what that's one of those. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What 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 say? What were you doing in a corporate life before starting? I'm just curious. Oh, uh, so so I have I've done a number of different jobs in my life, um, including I was an air traffic controller for three years. Um, I was doing project management for some large firms in the U.S. Um, I've done a lot of different things, but now um, I'm dedicated to impacting the world. Uh, what made you change from air traffic controller corporate <laughs> to impacting the world and working with course creators? What is the link? I, I think the link is that um, I never want to be doing one thing too long. I'm always looking for the bigger challenge. So I, I keep taking bigger and bigger risks, which, if you think about it, is the ideal um, entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. what, has been, what has been the biggest risk you've taken? Oh, it was definitely being an air traffic controller. Um, <laughs> that yeah, that was that was that was probably the most amazing job I've ever had. Um, and I tell people that it was uh, endless hours of boredom punctuated by moments of sheer terror. Wow! Well, is there? Um, uh, we, everyone listening or watching, we will get to the point where we are talking about courses. Don't worry. But uh, I'm curious uh, uh, to under, to know. Any, so can you tell us any moment of sheer terror that you had? Yeah, uh, so I so I worked in a, a control tower, so I actually could see out the window and see the airplanes flying. Um, I was working at an airport, and a pilot decided to turn where he thought he should turn. And if I hadn't made a decision and and told another plane what to do, um, they would have hit each other. Uh, turns out they missed by less, less than six feet. So yeah, I was a little, there was a little bit of terror in that one. Wow. But the, the, the thing was, is uh, I stayed calm. I saw it happening. I did the right thing. I made the right decision. Um, and they missed and they got to go home and see their families. So I, it was a good thing I was there that day. So they saved the day. Yep. They saved the day. And then, you know, sometimes... Uh, 
I think uh, it, like in the work that we do with the supporting businesses, we are a bit of sometimes the air traffic controller <laughs> of, <laughs> of their businesses when they make decisions, when they make moves. And then it's like, okay, no, like that's steering this direction. Yeah. Have you ever felt that way? Oh, yeah. So, so one of the things that I learned as an air traffic controller that I use every day is that um, it's a thing called um, you want to be able to keep the big picture. What that means is um, even though you get focused on the details and you're really in the weeds trying to get something done, if you're not thinking about everything else that's going on, you could literally destroy your business. So even though you're you know, so micro-focused on one thing, don't be forgetting about everything else that's going on in your business and how that could impact it. And the way I, the way I tell people that is at any one time as an air traffic controller, I could have 15 to 20 airplanes that I was controlling at the same time. And most of them were insisting on being in the same place at the same time, which doesn't work too well. So like in this situation where I kept those two planes apart, if I, I worked and did that, but I still had six other airplanes that were in the air at the same time that I had to remember about and not let them hit each other. So take take that to your business right it's not that extreme but think about it right is if you get too focused on one little thing something else could really derail your 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 business oh, that, that's so true that's so true sometimes you get focused on okay i need to sort out uh, that's one of the mistakes that i made there was um uh a, a lot of operational back-end things that we had to do in within GTEx. And so we said, okay, let's just focus on sorting this big chunk out of operation. <laughs> so we'll almost like stop marketing for two months. Yeah. We paid the price of that decision for the next six months because yeah. two months of a non focusing or barely focusing on lead generation, then you pay them in the following yeah. months. Yeah. And uh, learn the lesson there. <laughs> <laughs> that learned the lesson because it was literally half a year yeah, to get a, out. It's a hard lesson to learn situation. too. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a hard lesson to learn. Um, so, but uh, I'm curious uh, understanding more about like you are in the uh, in the space of creating high ticket offers. You work with a lot of course creators and yep. turning into like a course they've already created, maybe selling it for twenty seven dollars or forty seven dollars yeah. or a hundred dollars turning into something that they can sell for thousands, tens of thousands, yeah, it's, it's, hundreds of thousands. So how did you get there? Like, what was it that inspired you to, to start? So uh, what, it was, right? was, what it was was realizing that um, people were not selling on their value of their courses, but they were selling on price, right? And a lot of it was a self limiting the belief that people had that they couldn't sell their course for a lot of money. Um, one of my examples is uh, a friend who is a lawyer and she had a 21 day challenge. And what it was, was it helped people put everything they needed to together to go into, into a courtroom for a court case that they were going to do. Right. And so she was selling these, it was a, probably about 15 to 20 hours worth of training and she was selling it for $21. Over a period of a year and a half, she sold seven. Talked to her, convinced no, her to- no, make, no, That's not that much. Not that much. No, that's not that much. So we ta I talked to her, we convinced her to raise her price and we got her all the way up to $147. In the first day of, of changing the price, she didn't change any of her marketing. She didn't change anything other than the price. In the first day, she sold 28. Now we've got her convinced that she's selling it for $347 and we still, we still need to get her up higher. But most people, it's, it's self-limiting belief that people won't pay that much for me. The interesting thing to think about is the level of effort that you put in to do a $49 or $100, that level of effort to put that out is the same if you go and do a $10,000, $15,000, $25,000 program. It's the yeah. same amount of work to get it done, but the rewards are, are much higher. So what you have to really look at is not selling it on the price,
but selling it on the value that you're giving to that person. Isn't no, I'm just playing devil's advocate a bit here because uh, yes, I agree. Like the effort of a $27 program can be the same over 10,000, yep. 100,000, 20,000, but the expectations of the clients are very different from Absolutely. someone that pays 27 to 100,000. So how do you balance that part? So it, it, it's literally showing them what the value is that they're going to get out of it. And that can be, uh, you know, that can take a, a wide range. It could be, uh, you know, higher revenues. It could be more time off with your family. It could be um, better health benefits, right? So it depends on the value that they're going to get from doing it, right? So if you think about it, if, um, if you go and sell a program that is $25,000 and you guarantee that they're gonna get $250,000 in revenue in, right? That is a, a higher, perception of value. Now, the argument is, well, why don't you sell that for uh, $2,500, right? The problem with doing that is if you say that your program is 2,500 and you're going to guarantee 250,000, people are going to think that they're, you, that's unrealistic. There's, there, you know, what's, what's the catch? What's, you know, what's, what's the gimmick in it? So, those are the, some of the things that you have to balance in the psychology that's mm -hmm. going on in people's minds, right? So um, I, the one way I like to look at it is if I told you I had a car for $27 and I had a car for $270,000, what's your perception of what the car is going to look like? Yeah, right? I'm going to get a bicycle, not a car for 29 I'm not going to not even a, a, a screw for, yeah, <laughs> for $27 you know, so, of the car. Yeah. So, so one's, one's a little matchbox car and one's a Lamborghini, right? So, so it's, it's those kind of things that are going on in people's minds and you have to realize that that's what's going on and you have to um, show them what the value is that you're going to provide. Mm, I, I, love the, I love the switch in thinking, like the switch in thinking, in particular yeah. with the analogy of the car. Because yeah. uh, it's something that it might not be obvious. A lot of people see is a very crowded market. It's a very competitive market. So I'm just going to compete on price and compete on price and lower yeah. the prices so I can have more customers without really understanding that lowering the price can also affect the perception of yeah. the expectations that people are going to have. Like if they buy something for thousands of tens of thousands, that's what they're going to buy. So the expectation of what they're going to receive yeah is going to yep. be for that yep. price. If you're something doing something for $27, $27, also their expectation is going to be not as high. Yep. And, and you can blow them away and over deliver, but still they pay $27. So they will evaluate based on that. <laughs> yeah. And, and the other thing is, is, and unfortunately this is so true. It's, it's something that um, Tony Robbins has actually has numbers against people who buy courses only 3% of the people complete the course, 100%. right? So if you're, if you have a course that it, or a program that's more expensive, you're actually going to increase the likelihood of them um, doing it. And we'll talk a little bit later about the risk reversal program and how that helps to increase the success rate of people completing. Well, let's talk first about the uh, one of the things you mentioned in the conversations that we had was that, that you know, there are platforms like Udemy or similars mm -hmm. that can already provide yeah. leads for you and yeah. use them for lead generation. So talk me through that part first. So, so let me ask you a question first. Okay. How many, how many people are on your email list right now? Um, 15,000. 15,000. How much money do you think you paid in total to get the 15,000 on there. And I'm not going to make you, I'm not going to make you answer. If you are super good and are using yeah. Facebook ads and you can get it down to a dollar a lead, that's yeah, $15,000 that you pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How would definitely more. Well, it's definitely more. That's in time, money, pff, more than a hundred thousand. How would it be if you got those 15,000 
and and you were paid twenty five thousand dollars for it. That's all right. I'll take it. So that's what Udemy <laughs> does. That's what Udemy does, right? So if you put your if you put a course on Udemy and you start selling it there, they pay you, right? Mm -hmm. um, now it's only thirty percent of what the price is, but what's happening is you're really getting paid leads for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's things that you can do now to access those leads and be able to bring them out and bring them into higher ticket programs that are outside mm -hmm. of Udemy. Because Udemy typically is priced anything under about $150. In most cases, it's under $49. And yeah. Udemy does yeah. the pricing, right? In some cases, they'll sell it for free because they're trying to generate more, more students to get into their platform to around. So uh, my best story is I, uh, I met somebody who was literally the number five instructor on Udemy. Wow. Um, yeah, number five. He was making about $25,000 a year on Udemy. So they were paying him, he, they were paying him $25,000. Okay. He would been on Udemy for, I think it was about eight years. So he made a little bit of money. Yeah, but there's no way, nowhere near enough. I mean, no. it's like. <laughs> so, so we use, use, we use the technique to bring people out to, to go to a free, free webinar. Mm -hmm. And we, at the end of it, um, the, he had the opportunity to promote his course that we were doing outside. Now, one of the struggles I had was getting him to charge the right amount. I finally got him to charge $600 for his course outside of Udemy. Mm -hmm. we, had, we, had the, we had it open for three days for people to buy. He did almost $90,000 in those three days. Uh, that's almost how much you made in the entire, entire years that he had on Udemy ex three ex days. Exactly. And to think about it, he did not pay one cent for any of those leads. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But so can you get the leads from Udemy or do you need to use another system? Like no, you get the actually, name and email addresses of uh, your courses. Can you so the secret is that within Udemy, you can communicate to them within Udemy. And I... so you, you communicate within there. And then what you do is obviously you have something that they can opt into outside yep. of Udemy. And now you're getting free leads. Now you make it. So it's not something that you can export because I'm not familiar no. with Udemy. So no, it's not you can export a list, but you can communicate with all your subscribers yep. via, via internal use right. of the Udemy platform and then promote, hey, I'm running this extra training, yep. jump here, yep. register, and bring them to your mailing list in that way. Yep. And there's there's certain <laughs> there's certain rules that you have to be very aware of so that you don't get shut down. But yeah, that's the, the essentially that's what you can do within the Udemy platform. You can go and hey guys, I've got this great free training that I'd love you to 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 have. Come out. Love oh, it. by the way, I need your email address so I can make sure you you know show up on time and whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And then then you're generating your your own email list from that. Oh, one of the things that you you also talk about uh, outside Udemy is also about like using your book to yeah. create to create a course where does that fit into into the work that you do so essentially one of the things that books do like um so many people think books will make money for them and it doesn't yeah um, until until they write one and they promote it and then they realize that it doesn't yeah, yeah. And, 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 get, and, like, and talking to one here <laughs> yeah so what a book does for you is it gives you authority, right? It, mm -hmm. it says that I know what I'm talking about. The trick is, is to take your, take your book and each of the chapters is going to be one of the modules in your course. Mm -hmm. And what you do is in the book, you teach what to do. In the training, you teach them how to do it. Now, yeah. There are a lot of people out there that are going to buy your book, read what to do, and they're going to Google and they're going to YouTube and, and they're, going to, they're going to struggle. They'll probably figure it out, but most won't. And most are going to go, 
I need to go and work with Simone because he knows how to do it. You know, yeah. he's taught me what to do, but he knows how to do it and he's going to teach me how to do it. So that that's the purpose in my mind of a book. It's to teach them how or teach them what to do, build authority, and then use that as the platform to get them into your course. Uh, what would you say to those people that they say, oh, but I have a book. I've already given that in the, away in the book. You know, I, don't, I shouldn't, certainly the, the course should be a different topic, not the same topic of the book. So you can take it, but there's two, there, you can take it both ways. You could say that that book is level one, but if you want to learn all the master mastery of that topic, then here's, here's the extension of the course. In a lot of cases, it makes sense to um, also go and re redo the book as a course because some people can read it and not get it. They need that guidance. So you can still do it that way. The other thing that you could do is use it um, for a complementary program, right? So um, one of the ways I like to talk about this is um, pretty much anybody needs traffic, right? So you could have another course that teaches traffic that is complementary to that book or, you know, or whatever is complementary for you in that book, teach that as well as for another, for another course. Yeah. So you can, you can explore either the teach the what in the, in the course, uh, in the book, and then the how in the course, or the book is a level one foundation, the course is level two, or the course becomes a, a side training linked to the topic of the of yeah. the book, but it's like, like a different topic. Topic, yeah. And, and, yeah. and on this, I would love also to add the fact of people love to experience content in different ways as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I've had, for example, um, books uh, that I bought and then I didn't read a book but end up paying more for the course yeah just because I learn better in a group environment yep and uh, so I don't like reading I bought the book because I thought it was a good idea and then didn't didn't open it but I still want to learn so I ended up from the author then buying actually the group course or the online course uh and the, the, the information then when I check were exactly the same yeah but I don't feel missold because it's just my preferred way of learning and I'm willing to pay more to learn yeah. in a way that I prefer learning. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, there's really, there's really sort of three ways that people learn. One, through auditory, so by hearing it. So yeah. if you do an audio book, right, there are people who are going to buy that and, and learn from that. There are people who are visual, right? So, you know, slideshows, examples, things like that, movies, you know, at, at, at YouTube, and then there's people who will read. So yeah. if you're, if you're, if your course is covering off on all three of those, you're good. You're good. You've got people covered, right? Um, I think that's one of the great things about um, things like Zoom, where you can go and get the transcript automatically done, right? So when you replay, replay it, some people will be watching the video, some people will be reading it, right? And some people will just be listening. Right. Mm. So it's, it, it's, 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 it's amazing. Fact, every time someone's trying to say, Hey, why don't you buy my book? I'm like, do you have an audio book? Because I'm not going to read it. Yep. I'm not going to, yep. I'm actually getting rid of all my physical books right now. Um, <laughs> we're moving, we are in the middle of a house move at the moment of this recording. We're actually moving a house on in two days, getting rid of all the books. I don't read them. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm watching online programs and I'm listening to audiobooks. That's it. Yep. So if you want to sell me, a book? Don't send me a book. Send me there. I'll tell you for everyone listening right now. Won't sell me stuff. Send me audio or video. Uh, but we had. Uh, I was working with a client. We turned the, the book into an online course, uh, mm -hmm. and what the the comment that uh, and it was a great success. I think it was like a quarter of a million dollars in like three in uh, in two months. She had already a good audience that was engaged. Uh, and the topic that she covers is around cancer and it's very technical, very, very technical and specific. So the, yeah. what we, the challenge that we had was that people sometimes would not understand the book. Yeah. Even though it was written the simplest possible way, it's still very technical and very scientific. So 
uh, the online course was a, a simplified version of the book when she was like explaining the some uh, topics we're using fruit for example yeah. and the metaphor yeah. is like so here is your cell here is your nuclear this is what's happening here and it was an incredible success and the reviews were awesome and people bought the book and bought the online course so for yeah. everyone who's listening it, it is a no-brainer to create a course yeah. out of your book or vice versa yeah exactly because they they become complementary and they promote each other hundred percent, yeah. which now leads me to come back to something that you alluded at the beginning of the interview, which you talked about risk reversal. I say, I'm yeah. going to mention yeah. how risk reversal and the high ticket, they play together yeah. Yeah. when we talked about pricing. So let's close that loop now. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> about risk reversal. So uh, risk what, reversal. First of all, let's, let's explain what is a risk reversal first is from sure. the basic and then how can we implement them? So there are really kind of two, two, three-ish types of risk reversal. The most common one is um, if you're not satisfied with this course, I'll give you 100% back. So what's that saying is I, if I'm taking the risk, if you don't like it, I'll give you your money back, right? There are some people who take that a little bit further and they say, if you're not satisfied with this course, I'll give you 200% back. So that's an even bigger, they're taking a bigger risk that they're delivering the value that they say, right? So it, if you think about it, if it's a $2,000 course and if somebody's not happy with it, they're giving $4,000 back. What I do is uh, I've implemented a, a different risk reversal strategy in that whatever the cost of the high ticket is, and let's say $10,000. Mm -hmm. What we do is we say there's an upfront fee of 25% or $2,500 to get started. What we do then is we set goals to achieve before the next payment is due. So in a $10,000 version, right? what we do is we're ultimately going to guarantee that we're going to get you to a hundred thousand dollars. But we'll, in, in this case, once we get you to $10,000 or sorry, once we get you to $25,000, yeah. the next 2,500 is due. And then when we get you to a hundred thousand, the last 50% or 5,000 is due. So what that's really doing is it's taking the, it's taking the burden off of the person purchasing and putting it on me to make sure that they succeed. So yeah. it goes back to that whole idea of people who uh, only 3% will finish a course. By doing this re risk reversal, I'm taking some of the burden to make sure that you succeed. So I don't get paid unless you succeed. And what do you do with the scenario of people actually not achieving their goals or milestones. So, it, you know, it, it's going to happen, right? So what we do is we have to have constant check-ins of let's, let's be honest. You're, you're not doing what you need to be doing. I'm trying to make you do it. Maybe we need to make a clean break, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, it, it's all good and fine. Um, so far that has not happened. Because people are seeing that the burden is they don't want to let me down, which is funny because it's them that they can't, they shouldn't be wanting to let down. Yeah, it is more, it's easier to let ourselves down than to let someone else down yep. as human beings, I think. Yeah. I found very few people that I know that they will do more for themselves than they will do for others. Yep. And, and that's, that's pretty much, well, there aren't people, there are definitely people out there who will do more for themselves than anybody else. Yeah. But you know what, during the interview process, I figure those out and I don't want to work with them. And we say, you know, I don't think it's a good fit. Um, I appreciate you, you know, wanting to work with me, but I'm only going to work with those people that, I, you know, in the interview process, because when you're doing a high ticket, when you're doing more than $10,000, you should be having an interview. You should be having a conversation with 100%. the person. Right. To make sure, one, they want to work with you and two, you want to work with them because there's nothing worse than firing, um, firing a client. 
Yeah, I, I agree with you. And uh, so it goes down to the selection process. Yep. Um, yep. Any um, last question before we wrap up? Is there, in the selection process that you use, is there any particular thing that you can talk about that you want to be aware of that could be applied universally? Right, because I know yours, like every application process is specific because yeah. of the, my ideal yeah. client is different from your ideal client, from her ideal client, and so on. But is there some things that you can apply to this application that can apply to every industry and every situation? Yeah, um, don't get don't get into the point where you say yes to work some with somebody just because you need the money, because you're going to get yourself into a bad situation, right? So Always, you need you need. No right uh, no, we've all done no it way. we've all done it so so and more than once more and than more once than... so here's the thing right you, you know you know the term listen to your gut mm -hmm. do that mm -hmm. right if you're talking to somebody and you're like there's something just not right say no because here's what it does it opens up space for somebody else to come in who you yeah. do want to work with so you've got to be able to rationalize it when you are there in that moment. Yeah. Because on one side, you might have, yeah. the car needs to pay, the rent, yeah. the mortgage, yeah. the holiday, yeah. the, the team, the staff. And well, on the other side, you have your gut that is saying, don't take this person. Don't well, take them. <laughs> <It's got> <laughs> so, so to give you an example, right? One of my, one of my programs, it's $100,000 to work with me. Yeah. It's a done for you program. I could easily be going, you know what? I, I need the money. I need 25,000. Simone, yeah, I'm going to say yes, but I, I can't stand you. I don't want to work with you, but I'll take your money. It's going to be a disaster, right? Okay. It's going to be a disaster. Whereas if I go, you know what? I really like Simone. I love his passion. I love what he's already done. I know that he's, you know, and he's asking me to work with him. I'm not asking him to work with me. That's going to work. Let's do that. Let's make this, let's make this deal. Let's make it work. Right. So work. You, you, you've got Where do it. I transfer the money then. <laughs> I, I, take, I, I take credit cards. Just give me a picture. And... Bitcoins. You take Bitcoins as well. I, no, I, I haven't. I haven't gone down that avenue yet. <laughs> no, me neither. Me neither. But anyway, Stephen, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. And uh, like to recap the weird like three points that we mainly discuss. Uh, one is to have this air pilot controller attitude in on your business, yep. making sure that you have an overview of whatever is going on. The moment you focus solely on one thing, other things are going to blow up. So make sure yep. you always have this overview. Uh, then we talked about how to use uh, Udemy or other platforms like Udemy to generate leads uh, and then drive traffic to your high ticket program, how to turn your books into high ticket programs, as well as uh, how to create uh, great risk reversals that uh, get someone to say yes uh, uh, more comfortably. Yes. Uh, to working to working with you. So if someone wants to explore more either of these points or um, something else with you, what is the best way to reach out for you to you and what do you have for, for our guests? Yeah, so the easiest way is actually go to my personal website. It's stephencaffrey.com. So uh, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-C-A-F, F as in Frank, E-R-Y.com. On there is a, uh, a, a link for a PDF that will describe more about the process for risk reversal, how to implement that. Um, if you want to download it, please do. I, I would love you to take that and learn from it. If not, at the bottom of the page is a calendar so you can book my time and we can get on and, and just talk about what your strategies are. There we go. That's what it's talking about. So for those of you yeah. that are watching on YouTube, uh, if you're listening on the podcast, just imagine that we are showing the website. Uh, that's where you can find the how to get nine times a prospect to raise their hand and ask for more uh, details from you. And that's the free PDF. And then here you can find the calendar link where you can book a call with, uh, uh, where you can book a call with Stephen. So thank you, Stephen. Thank you very much. Uh, Simone, uh, my pleasure. I always enjoy talking with you. 
Uh, same here. And uh, for everyone listening or watching, thank you for listening and watching. Make sure you get in touch with Stephen. Uh, if you enjoy the show, subscribe. Yeah, it's a must. Like, is 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 I'm imposing you to subscribe and to leave a comment as well. And uh, until next time, always remember that together we grow exponentially. Ciao.